Good afternoon, all attendees. Welcome to Brahm Center's Health Talk. For today's talk, we have the pleasure of uh, inviting Dr. Florina to give this talk. Good afternoon, Dr. Florina. How are you today? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm good. Thank you. I enjoy talking with you <laughs> remotely. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Florina, we have uh, almost uh, 100 person already uh, in the room. Oh, that's great. So maybe you would like to start? Yes, I do. Whenever you are ready, we just uh, start our sharing session. Yes, Dr. Florina, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. It's good to see you all online in this afternoon. Uh, it's a little bit cloudy, but I think that after the rain, uh, the weather would be cooler and will feel very, very good. However, I hope that will be very, very good online too. Um, I welcome you all, a cheerful good afternoon to all of you and warm greetings from me and my colleague, colleague who, who is practically a specialist in the rheumatology field. So Dr. Lee Wern and me pre prepare some slides for, for you and would like to share some points related to pain and joints. So practically the two keywords for today would be key join and key pain. If we talk about these two words, we'll try to find out how to understand them better. And because everybody wondered at least once in his or her lifetime where pain comes, how practically we are feeling pain. What do we mean by healthy? What do we mean by join? This would practically be our subject for today. And we try to learn what really means a healthy joint, how a joint can change in structure and function um, in a person's life and whether that change it is normal or not. And if those change occur practically what can we do in order to prevent the pain from occurring or if the pain is there, how to deal with it. Me and my colleague would like to share the uh, information that the activity today is for a pedagogic purpose. So practically, you will be hearing from us um, a lot of things. However, when you want to diagnose, you will be meeting your um, physicians, uh, you'll meeting your uh, pra clinical practitioners because they will be there to help you. So we'd like to share this point with you and is about asking the best specialist we have at hand, uh, the GPs, the medical degree holders that all work for us and warm our hearts because they are the front line whenever you can look for them. Then they are specialists of, of bones, the orthopedists, the osteopath, podiatrist, certified pedotrist, and all knowledgeable people uh, that will, who will help you choose the best shoes ever, or those knowledgeable chiropractors who will help manipulate your bones and ligaments in order to maintain the balance. So if you can understand, we have plenty of friends in the clinical setups and we have people to ask whenever in doubt. And that's the best approach that we can have. Uh, however, it's good for us to have certain knowledge and that particular knowledge would be the starting point whenever we have any problem because life is filled with problems, uh, bigger or smaller, but we always face them and solve them one way or another. Since there is no fixed answer to any medical situations, if we have a basic knowledge about ourselves would help us approach the right professional 
listen to that particular professional, follow up and do whatever is, is necessary to be done for us to be healthy and balanced. That's our aim. And today's objectives would be talking about the joints, will be expressing the idea that joints are parts of the human body and they have particular structures. That particular structures is pretty complex and eventually would fulfill functions. We need joints in order to move, to keep balance, to keep our posture, of course, correctly. And in the meantime, we know that joints as structures would have um, a maintenance mechanism, specially designed for them. Why? Because we are exposed to certain risks every single moment of the day and would like to prevent those risks becoming the causes of our problems, our diseases or injuries. And in case something happens and maintenance mechanism fails, then the treatment shall be in place. And of course, the treatment shall be implemented by specialists. And of course, we need to support the specialist work in order to um, have a positive outcome, meaning we will be back to balance and we will be having joints again with perfect structure or functional structures and definitely in place for us to do whatever we have to do every single day. That's the reason for we have chosen certain points to talk about in more depth, would we'll try to find out what causes pain. And if pain is related to the joints, we call it altragia. Then if we have a particular type of pain in the joints, we try to find out what the doctors want us to know and when to seek help. Eventually, my colleague chosen one particular example of pain if caused by a degenerative disease called osteoarthritis. So she prepared some slides for us to understand osteoarthritis, what is it and how to approach it further. To start with, what is pain? Pain, I think that everybody knows if it's physical, is caused by any injuries of our internal structures. No matter where the structures are located, if they are damaged, pain would occur. Pain is an alarm sign, is a trigger to our attention. If something is wrong within, our bodies, we need to be aware and take action appropriately. If we are talking about pain, pain can be a sudden pain, we call it acute one, or a chronic pain, which lasts for months. If these two are identified rapidly and carefully, we definitely address the specialists and they will help us get rid of pain or manage it. When we talk about joints and pain, definitely we can understand that if a joint structure is damaged, then the pain would occur. This trigger, which is the injured joint, would practically help us realize that a particular type of injury caused a destruction in our joint. And in our bodies, we have plenty of joints. We have joints with less uh, balance, with less mobility, but we have joints which would definitely allow us perfect complex movement. Those complex joints involved in a variety of movements, so having plenty of mobility, would be the synovial joints. And those would have nerves attached to them. That's the reason for the pain we feel the moment the joint is destroyed. And what kind of pain we are talking about? We are talking about inflammatory caused pain or autoimmune caused pain and definitely biomechanic related pain, trauma ones. Uh, those pain would, could occur if we are poorly nourished nourished, we lack vitamins or proteins in our diet, or practically 
uh, pain related to hormonal imbalances. So to wrap up, we can identify that the causes of pain are multiple. What is our job? It is to identify the pain first because then the professionals would look into the cause for the pain and help us further. Some time ago, people identified joints as very closely related to the body posture. And all of us know that body posture is something that keeps us looking good. So if we have a poor posture, definitely all the structures involved in would suffer, inclusive the joints. If there is a faulty posture, we may not feel good. We may feel tired, we may feel stressed. We have uh, to realize that the muscles are too tense and definitely over time, certain structure would follow, change in the appearance and in functions and could be chronic diseases. If you, we observe this picture, we can understand practically the complexity of our human body. So it explains the necessity of having joints around. And if you observed how many joints would be involved in our posture, practically we can understand the source of pain can be multiple. What we desire, however, it is to have a better posture, the best we can get. But if one element in our human body posture changes, for example, uh, when the foot is not properly aligned and the architecture of the foot is changing, it will lead eventually to a complex change along the skeletal system and musculoskeletal system, which would lead to unevenness in all other structures of our body. Sometimes people start to have a little joke. If I don't put my foot right on the ground, my head would be aching after that. So you can see practically the relationship between a stable foot and an unstable or stable uh, joint in the neck. What the doctors would like us to know, starting from the posture perspective, it is that pain could be caused by lots of elements, including the muscle strain or a ligament sprain. These are temporary. Normally they heal. We need a short time, we need to be patient and we go back to normal. However, if we continue to stress those initially injured ligaments or muscles or tendons, if we do that, they will become weak. Their weakness eventually would reflect into other structure stability. By, the, by example, the disc that we have in between the spine bones, the vertebrae. And because of that, the weakness would spread to the spine and we may eventually experience instability, sudden fall, or practically any other accidents caused by the wicked, uh, sorry, by the wicked ligaments. So that's something the doctors want us to know. And also the doctors wear out the idea. They will wear the, uh, let's say, awareness mask to us. It's a little bit gloomy, but this is uh, how you can imagine the doctors will practically want us to know that over the years, if we abuse our structures, we'll develop definitely more and more complications. You can take, for example, stretching knees. We all do that. If we do not stretch the knees properly and we abuse this kind of movement, we definitely engage the muscles in the wrong way we may endanger us by tearing the ligaments and the tendons in that particular joint that the knee is. And over time, a continuous stress to that knee joint would definitely contribute to a permanent damage. And with the permanent damage, there will be a permanent pain. 
So that's the relationship between the structures and our daily activity. And that's what the doctors want us to know. Why those things happen? Even though we said that ligaments and tendons and muscles are very closely related to whatever posture is called and whatever activities we do day by day, uh, even though they are there very visible as knowledge to us, the doctors still uh, trigger the awareness about what is inside the joint. Is an important component of the joint that will make the joint able to fulfill the job. So the functions of a joint would deeply and dearly depend on a fluid which exists within that particular joint. If you imagine the joint being a capsule, uh, that capsule has a particular fluid inside coming from the cells that form the, caps uh, the capsule and coming from the blood itself. That fluid is essential because it will reduce the friction while we move. Imagine that in that particular capsule, we have the bone ends. And the bone ends would move accordingly when we perform a certain movement caused by the muscle contraction. So the fluid within the capsule of the joint will reduce the friction by lubricating that particular joint and by lubricating the ends of those bones coming into contact. They will absorb the shock. They will supply oxygen and nutrients while removing the waste and carbon dioxide. They also help us fight infections because we are always exposed to the environment and we never know when we can get viruses of bacteria. Then if we are talking about the role of that fluid in movement, it's quite important for us to see that the movement joints would have a different structure of that fluid for the cases when we move or not. So the fluidity of that particular component lubricant within the joint would change with movement. At the end of the day, what is the moral of this um, description? It is that we have to move, we have to ambulate because this ambulation and warming up would practically support the joint structures. If we are bedridden, by example, the fluid that the joint would perform would secrete would be less and less, thicker and thicker, and sometimes pain occur. Together with this element about movement, we can say that we can think also of moving, but with certain restrictions. Why these restrictions come about? It is, be it is because the movements giving us mobility, flexibility, would also give us sensibility. The more flexible a joint is, the more exposed to friction and to injuries may be. And that's the reason for the balance that we have to keep within our movements. So not overstretching or not overloading the joints because at the end of the day, we want them to be balanced and protected. From here, also, doctors want us to know that we have certain elements that will contribute to the stability, to the flexibility, and there is always a given and a taken. If we observe the pictures in this slide, we can identify there is a rigidity involved in our movement. And that particular rigidity gives us the stability. But the joints are rigid and flexible in the same time. It's a wonderful combination. It's amazing balance that our structures will maintain throughout our lives. And that's the reason for we have our duty to keep them so. If you observe that the archetype, the architecture of bones within our feet, are essential when the flexibility and the rigidity are maintained because they will dearly contribute to the human balance. The type of arc that a person may have would decide eventually the type of walking 
and the balance. It's important for us to know our food type and it's important for us to choose the right footwear in order to support the feet while either we stand or move. Because with the right footwear, the joints with their extra articular ligaments would be more balanced, will have extra support. Nowadays, we are not walking barefooted anymore. We walk on hard surfaces. And the hard surfaces practically are not the original component in our design. So that's the reason for the arc type would change if we do not wear the proper shoes. Also, a proper shoe would allow stability and comfort, would help us absorb the shock, is practically complementing the job that the foot arc type would do. And if we want to be fashionable and we want a particular type of footwear for a particular situation, we also need to be aware that a temporary footwear would do the job. We cannot wear high heels or flip-flops all the time. We have to vary the type of footwear according to the activities that, that we are involved in. In case we do not follow those, uh, let's say, common sense observations that we have, changes in feet and bones, ligaments and tendons would occur. They will stay for a little while, but they can become chronic. And the chronic changes, the permanent changes would be eventually leading to a chronic pain in feet and in the whole system. So that's the importance of knowing the balance between rigidity and flexibility and adapting to our daily life. Our doctors will always ask us, how do you walk? What is your walking style? They will practically ask us to walk in front of them in order to see how the stances of our walk would be. And based on the type of foot arc that we have, our walking would vary. How shall we see it? Just observe your footwear and observe where the wearing of your footwear happened. And that particular change would tell you what kind of walker you are. And it's quite important because if we observe the changes from the normal, either in supination of overpronation uh, types, then we can follow accordingly and change our footwear, give extra support to the feet and definitely contribute to a better balance. And we need the balance. We need the balance because we are moving individuals. We don't really like to sit all day long. We like to run, to jog, to jump, and we like to dance and we like to go shopping. But these activities would have to be also balanced. We have to get, give our body rest. If we are talking about the example of a runner, if you think of yourselves, you'll, if you really like running, there is a moment of the day we do this running. There is a perfect spot when you want your running to take place. But the running is also associated with some issues and especially the knees are the ones suffering. We call it the runner's knee. Sometimes we prefer a specific uh, place in a park to run. We so like that circuit of our running, but we don't realize that unevenness in the ground or certain inclination of the pathway would ask only one knee to bear more load than the other. So practically the mechanical stress that we put on that particular knee in the long run would be observed by slight changes or more intense changes. And those changes in the structures in the knee could practically lead to pain. When the pain occurs, definitely we have a big question mark and ask ourselves, what's going wrong? What did I do wrong? And that's the trigger for our further questions. And that's the trigger for consulting specialists. 
we always have to be careful. It's not only running that causes us troubles. If we are thinking of day by day work, definitely we are thinking about how we carry our bags. Especially young people, uh, students who carry their bags and they are heavy bags when they go to school. Those have to be careful. And if they do not realize, we as parents have to be around to help them. As an adult, also we have to be careful on how to wear our bags. Wearing kids, wow, is such a lovely moment. But when we carry them wrongly, then this wonderful moment can transform itself into a nightmare. So that's our examples which could uh, supplement our understanding of the best posture related to painful or not painful days. We are constantly be engrossed in uh, daily activities and we are not aware of what's going on around. And this is another cause for permanent changes within our bodies and eventually pain associated with them. If you see how good we are while walking and texting, then you can understand from the pictures here what the consequences of such activity, pleasant one, would be. And the domino effect would be something that happens every single day because one joint changing would lead to another joint changing and so far and so on until the entire structure would be imbalanced and then with the imbalance pain occurs what the doctors would like us to know if we really want a normal posture if we really want to have strong joints stable ones we need to know certain things about them we need to screen about our posture or our situations, about the joint muscles or any ligaments and tendons, we only need to look for timely intervention because knowledge can be prevention, education can also trigger the timely intervention. And then we can go back to normal and we can live happily ever after. What exactly is the right moment, however, to seek for help is practically a uh, variable. You cannot say for sure when, but if you notice certain things, it's good for yourself, reflective time, and then it's good for you to trigger questions for yourself and to bring those questions to professionals. So, when the type of foot arc looks either too flat or too high, that triggers attention. And that is a moment to look for orthotics. And you have to ask the specialist. When the range of movement in a certain joint is limited, suddenly becomes limited, with or without pain, with or without inflammation, with or without injuries. When the shoe wear patterns became weird. We have to check the shoes. It's good to observe those patterns and it's good to change the shoes when we see them also changed. But when they change and the patterns are weird, definitely we need to ask why. When the arm swing becomes too big means it is a need of balance and the arm swing is contributing to, uh, to that balance. When the alignment of shoulder and head goes off is another moment when we start thinking that our body posture is not quite um, ideal. When the walking is becoming painful or unsteady, when the movements in certain joints become difficult and limit our daily activities and make us uh, grumpy, when there is pain which either increases in intensity or changes in characteristics, whether they disturb us during the day or during the night, 
and whether we need to take Panadol or any other medication or to do anything in order to get rid of it. When there is weakness associated with pain and numbness, where daily activity transform themselves into a nightmare. These are moments when we need to ask for help. If by example, the body temperature increases, so we experience fever, we suddenly think, oh, that is a flu, stomach flu, whatever, common cold or anything, I can take the Panadol and go off. But if the fever persists, and especially if it is not high level fever, then is a trigger for our questioning and we have to ask the, quest the doctors about. When that particular increase in temperature, however, is located to a joint, that is a sign that the joint is suffering. So we need to ask the professionals. When we lose weight is also a, a moment to ask ourselves why. A lot of time we are happy about it, but this weight loss could trigger a lot of questions and pretty serious ones. So it's, it's better to, to look for the changes. When we address the clinicians, they will have plenty of knowledge in order to put our information into the right frame. So in the professional mind, in the doctor's mind, plenty of connections would be constructed based on the information we give to them. So we have to give to the doctors the right information as detailed as possible. Because if we inform the doctors about what's going on, what we felt, what we observed, the doctors would help us see what is wrong with us. So whenever we go to see a doctor, we have to share all the details. Long ago, it was a kind of joke. You have to tell everything to your doctor and to the priest. So the old joke actually is real. It's thousands of years uh, of um, evidence about this type of joke. So what we have to do, it is to ask for a consultation and to give the right information. When the things happen, what happened? What made them worse? or what improved them. And I'm talking about pain and how the pain changes with or without medication, with or without changing in body position, with or without a right moment of the day. Whether together with pain, we observe any other changes. So practically, if we share with the doctor whatever we observe and we give them details and logically the ones, the doctors would also help us with the follow-up and they will help diagnose and treat with the right medicine. If we have any allergies, it's quite important to let our doctor know. If we have on specific medication or we take any supplements or herbs or if we follow alternative medicine, it's important for the doctors to know because they will fill in our patient case notes and then they will follow up with other specialists. They will clear the doubts from the medical and professional point of view, and they will clear practically our problems. Okay, you may say, how on earth am I going to remember all this? It sounds so alien. I cannot do that. Yes, it's true. We are not walking computers, but we have a piece of paper or our journal and we can write down. If we write down, we can inform clearly and specifically our medical professionals. Because a lot of time, actually all the time from the medical perspective, the medical history, the anamnesis of our patients is the crucial point for us. If we know about you, all the details, will be able to understand what's going on around. If you accidentally uh, miss to inform us about certain things, it, and it happens, it could hinder practically our work. So we dearly count on your diligent work uh, about sharing with us what's going on. And of course, 
we are not having a, a memory of elephants. We need extra help. So we need computers. But computers nowadays have to work in networks. And sometimes the networks do not communicate very well one with another. Uh, there is a huge effort and we really appreciate it. We really want to communicate be in between networks. So the private clinicians or the clinicians from the hospitals would have the same information and will share information between the hospitals, polyclinics, or any other medical settings, because we really want to find out as much as possible about a person, a patient's needs. At the end of the day, if a person goes to a clinician and shares information, after a very thorough mind exercise, mindful exercise, neuronal exercise, knowledge exercise, the medical professional will put together certain information and will try to diagnose. This is one example. The doctor would check for the characteristics of a pain that occurs in a joint and will try to differentiate between two types of diseases in that particular joint, either an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis or a degenerative disease like the osteoarthritis. So you can observe practically there are slight differences. And only by knowing about the descriptions that you give to us, we proceed further to the uh, clinical examination, to the laboratory investigation, and help you with the right diagnosis. So the whole body have to be examined in order to identify what exactly happens with one joint or if the same problem occurs in many joints. And those problems can be painful, all right, very vocal, but can be silent. And when it is a silent transformation, then a big question mark occurs and a big issue we have to solve. In order to diagnose the osteoarthritis, doctors need to run certain protocols from your questioning, from the anamnesis to the clinical examination, to the laboratory examination, imaging in, uh, examination, eventually looking at the risk factors and the probable causes of them. So in our case today, we are talking about osteoarthritis and osteoarthritis practically is not osteoporosis, is not gout, is not rheumatoid arthritis. As I mentioned previously, there are different sources of pain in joints. Osteoporosis would be related to the lack uh, of bone structures when actually over time, the network of fibers in the bones together with the calcium uh, would practically change the, the architecture, the wonderful, strong and flexible architecture of the bones, leading to what? Weaker bones and easy fracture ones. It's not gout. Gout is something that you may know by now is caused by inflammation and is caused by certain chemicals which accumulate in joints and those causing an inflammation and definitely related to pain. It's not an autoimmune disease like a rheumatoid arthritis triggered by a specific type of bacterium inflammation and infection. So these osteoarthritis is not one of these, but is definitely a painful disease and is caused by a wear and tear of the joints that we were uh, having. So the structures in the joints there change. The image here shows you practically how the knee changes from a normal structure to an osteoarthritis one. So osteoarthritis comes with the wear and tear of the cartilage and the structure of the joint but in the meantime comes with addition of the bone structure and we call it bone spurs or osteophytes. Those would practically lead to intense pain. And as I mentioned, cartilages are intensely innervated. They are having plenty of nerve supply. However, they have little blood supply and that's the, you know, that's the cause, that's the cause of our issues. So repairing, it takes a time. 
The bone spurs are the ones making the huge friction between the uneven surfaces of the ends of the bones in the joint. So you can see practically what really happens and how we lost the cartilage and the space of joint actually narrows down, which would practically cause more friction, more pressure, more tension and more pain. Osteoarthritis comes with stiffness, of course, because if we lack of cartilage and the fluid in the uh, joint, movement would be uh, less intense. The movement would be um, slightly impossible, actually. While we move, we have pain. And of course, pain would further uh, diminish the level of mobility in that joint. Then we have the change in the shape and also we have the noises. No, uh, the, these are one of the strongest joints within the human body, supporting the body weight. And this is at risk for the osteoarthritis of the knee. Then if pain occurs, if structures are changed, of course the functions of those uh, joints change. And what would happen eventually less mobility and troubles while we engage the joints in certain activities. One trouble would be climbing stairs. When we need to load the knees with our body weight and definitely this would be something that arthritis would do to the knee, limiting the activities in those articulations. Osteoarthritis is common in large weight-bearing joints. However, in other small ones too. So practically is the degenerative disease which will cover a lot of joints and eventually limit our day-to-day -day activities. Of course, osteoarthritis doesn't mean that it occurs in everybody. There are various risk factors and various conditions. And that's the doctor's job to identify and to help. How to help? We do a clinical examination for the joint. We observe the joints. We check the mobility. We check the level of pain. And then we look through by using the diagnostic imaging modalities. A simple X-ray can show the difference between a normal joint of the knee and the osteoarthritic one. And you can observe practically a huge difference. Then, as I mentioned, it's not the big joints involved in, they are small joints as well. And they are those small joints which are similar to the knee joints in terms of uh, structures and which will be involved in very intense activities because the mobility of those joints is high. We'll identify the changes by using specific diagnostic imaging modalities like the magnetic resonance one, which would identify the changes in the soft tissues. However, X-ray will change will give us the chain information about the changes in the bones so that's the reason for the two modalities complement one another and they will help us diagnose and follow up if we follow up we have a goal we have a goal as medical professionals but you have a goal as individuals who may use the information in order to protect yourself before the osteoarthritis occurs or while during a osteoarthritis arthritis develops because it is a chronic disease and is a progressive one. Unfortunately, there is no cure, but there is everything at hand which can prevent it. And definitely there are modalities to slow down the progression. And we have to control the pain. We have to protect the joints from further deterioration, either in the pharmacological or non-pharmacological way. And definitely we have to look at the risk factors because out from the risk factors causes arise. And always keep in mind that there is a risk and benefit and there should be a balance. And the balance should, however, go towards the benefits.
if the modalities we use have more benefits than the risk, then we have the green light to go. What to do? We have to manage the pain first. No one in this world is happy in pain. No one. Even if it is a very little pain or intense pain, definitely there is no one in this world loving being in pain. At the initial stage, rest would be do the right job. Applying some uh, low temperature or warm temperature locally on the painful joint in order to diminish the intensity of pain can work. Take painkillers would be the next step. And painkillers will also be decided upon based on intensity of the pain. But the Panadol is the one that works very nicely in majority of people and is quite stomach friendly. All right. However, we have always to inform the doctors whether we take any other medication and how we respond to Panadol or any other painkillers. We always have to read carefully the leaflets of the medicine we take and ask for clarification in, in case we need them. Then medication can come in pill form or can come in gel form or injection forms. Based on intensity of the pain, we can apply them differently is the decision of the medical professionals on this. And we have to share with them about the intensity of the pain we go through and about the results of the medicine we take. At the end of the day, if the pain goes down, we can a we be able to go back to our day-to-day -day lives. However, even pain is there, strengthening and stretching would improve the muscle activity surrounding the joints and by doing so plenty of blood supply would be present in the area eventually with the blood supply the right nutrients would come to the joints in order to support the healing and promote their functions so it's quite important the exercise to continue at a moderate or little intensity based on the patient endurance so we have to control. We have to control by any means. If the chemicals are around for us to do so, then we go for the medication. But there will always be the attention uh, on the benefits and the risks. Chemicals introduced within the human body would definitely interact one with another or with other chemicals within the human body. And that's the reason for we have to be careful when we take pills. But it's not about pills. We can have plenty other modalities which can be effective uh, as pain relieving methods. So we can apply temperature, we can uh, follow a massage, we can follow acupuncture. So all activities, all alternative medical procedures which can relax the muscles, reduce the tension within tendons and ligaments, reposition practically the joint within its own natural architecture and release the pressure within the joint. However, the exercises would be there present to support the muscle strength and to support the flexibility of tendons and ligaments. And that type of exercise we choose would be gentle one. So we do not overload practically the joints even farther. In case the muscles are weaker and the pain become intense, we are going for support, external supports, which would support the body weight and promote mobility. We have to choose those helpers based on the risk factors we know age, genetics, previous injuries or lifestyles, all the aids we have for the osteoarthritic patients would vary from one situation to another. There is no identical case. Age, definitely we cannot control. Genetics also. Gender as well. In women, osteoarthritis develop faster than in men while the women reach menopause. 
Previous injuries, however, and illnesses could be, let's say, reduced in frequency or intensity if we know how to exercise, if we know how to choose the right footwear, if we know how to maintain the posture and so far and so on. Lifestyle is quite important elements that we can manipulate. So it will come with changes in daily activities, changing in smoking, in diet, checking for the diabetic status and monitoring the body weight. Lifestyle also contain enough rest because if we rest well enough, we support our chemical environment, which will be balanced. And there were studies which showed that uh, enough rest practically supports the pain relief mechanism, which we have like an inbuilt built in mechanism. So there is an increased evidence on this. More or less, besides the rest overnight, we have to give a rest to the joints that have been affected. So there are plenty of modalities for us to choose from based on the type of joint that has been affected. You can notice practically they could be common sense tools based on the patient needs. Either for the fine motor skills or for the grossier one, those changes are there to give the rest to the involved our joints by osteoarthritis. Enough rest, it is to give a protection level to the joints and the muscles. So we want to lessen the stress on the joints. We, we want to um, give the, the joints a support while we perform daily simple tasks. By example, wringing the clothes, it, which we have done it before without problem now can become a little bit of troublesome activity. Walking sticks will also help the patients uh, mobilize from one place to another and give them stability, confidence, and they will help them move. Because we said that uh, the exercise, minimum exercise would support the joint uh, well-being and will prevent the osteoarthritis from, the from progressing further. If we are talking about how we really enjoy our walking and texting or our daily uh, office work, we definitely consider the changes in the posture related to the further progression of the osteoarthritis. So if we are office people, we really need to be careful on that and the posture would definitely be one of the elements that we have to work upon. Also, how we position ourselves at the desk, it's important because the pressure exerted on the intervertebral discs would be a risk of further progression of the osteoarthritic changes. So we really need to look for those special types of chairs in order to accommodate the position at desk. It's already observed that we became eye posture people. So the trigger has been, um, let's say, highlighted some time ago. Now we know about it and we know what to do because definitely is within our abilities. Also another factor that we can change, it is the footwear. Either it is a flat foot or a high arc type of foot. If we change the footwear, would definitely change it according to the foot arc that we have. And also ladies would try to examine the posture while they wearing flip-flops or high heel shoes and understanding the changes within the spine and the joints would help them understand how to change the footwear accordingly and how to balance the wearing of the right footwear. Now, another point that we can manage 
Another variable that can be changed is the body weight. You can observe that with increased body weight, the change in the spine would be more and more obvious. So the lordotic curve would accentuate once we become a little bit plumber. Okay, so uh, this is something that we can do. We need to look for a balanced body weight. Studies observe that losing weight help practically with the body posture and easy the tension within the intervertebral disc and prevented the osteoporosis and osteoarthritis to progress. Together with the body weight, we can consider modalities, right? If the loss of, uh, loss of weight is our target. So normally we choose plenty of activities. However, in osteoarthritic patients, swimming, elliptical training or cycling would be beneficial. Losing weight is not only about the physical component. It will interact with the chemistry within the human body. And that's the reason for we need to take care of it. And there will be means of doing so. It's so nice when you go to a copy shop and have your own ah, tasty and so flavored drinks. However, the amount of sugar in it would cost us dearly. And also we are three in one fence. And that's something that we have to take into consideration. Forget about the sugar meats. So whenever comes with sugar should be under control because diabetes is one of the biggest enemies in terms of chronic changes within the human body structures, including the joints. And then we have means to check and we also have means to moderate our osteoarthritis progression. So if we are talking about the patients who suffer for osteoarthritis, so chronic degeneration of joints, there would be means of exercising in order to uh, moderately load the joints and to maintain the flexibility, the mobility of them because the blood supply only comes while moving. However, it is an important fact about to not ignore the pain because once the pain occurs, intensifies that moment, the person who suffers from osteoarthritis is at risk. That person needs to monitor and to stop when necessary. And these are some certain exercises patients with osteoarthritis can do in order to help the knees maintain their structures for long. At the end of the day, we have to make the day-to-day -day life easier for the patients suffering from osteoarthritis. And I think that a lot of helpful methods are around. If you really want to find about them, it's good for you to check with your medical professionals would be more than happy to support you with knowledge and with right uh, exercise regimens, with right treatment, pharmaceutical ones, and be careful on the non-pharmaceutical, including the supplements. There Dr. would be always a trap. Yes. Yes. Um, unfortunately, our time is up. And uh, yes. I would like to... Uh, let the attendee know that we will have another talk next Saturday. And there are some questions yes. that we did not manage to answer and we shall answer them next Saturday. So Dr. Yes, Florida. actually there's, sorry, this is what, this was the last slide that actually encompassed everything about how to make our life easier, our patient's life easier. Okay, yes, sure. So Dr. Florina, thank you so much. Uh, you have given us a lot of good information and uh, we, our attendee can still refer to the slide. They will be posted on Facebook actually. So they can refer oh, to them as well on our Facebook that's page. That's great. Yes. That's so, great, that's great. 
enjoy watching and enjoy uh, having more information and asking around. Thank you, Dr. Florina. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for your time as well. All the best to you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.